Good afternoon. My name is Robert Lubar Miserai, and I am the curator uh, of the Miro collection and of this exhibition. This is the second time in five years that we're showing the collection. The first show was a thematic show that we did in, 19, in 2016 called Materiality and Metamorphosis. And this exhibition is called Signs and Figurations. This is the first time we're showing all 85 works uh, in the Portuguese State Collection, which has been given to the municipality of Porto and is on long-term deposit uh, at the Museu Saralbes. This time, uh, to coincide with the recent restoration of the villa, uh, the Caja Saralbes, by Alvaro Siza, I wanted to do a very different kind of installation that would really show the work off to its best advantage with the backdrop of this magnificent uh, house. We put everything on panels so as not to disturb the walls and really to create a symbiosis between the architecture and Miro's work. The collection, as I mentioned, has 85 uh, objects, uh, painting, drawing, sculpture, and a series of woven works that are really not tapestries, but something quite uh, different and unique that we'll be looking at. This uh, room where we are now is uh, one of the great uh, rooms of the Casa Saralbes. It's the Salau, and I only have three works uh, exhibited here. A mural painting, although it's an oil on canvas, by Miro of 1953, a magnificent canvas from 1960, and another work, which is one of my favorite in the collections, from uh, 1938. So there are three different periods represented here, and we can trace a kind of trajectory among these paintings. This object, which is done on masonite, which is a very aggressive kind uh, of material, but it's an extraordinarily poetic work that is all about the passage of birds through space. And one has the sense of sky, of air, the line, the dotted line suggesting a trajectory, and then the little points suggesting the wings of the bird. In 1953, uh, Miro was increasingly working on a very large scale. And in fact, during the decade of the 1950s, Miro would execute ceramic murals uh, that were truly uh, on a huge scale. And as he was working on these very large public murals and public projects, his uh, painting also achieved a large monumental scale. And this, it almost has the effect of a scroll that has been uh, opened up. And what is so interesting is you can see that there are some very clear signs for figures, or what Miro would call personage, uh, stars in the background, but some of the figuration is also very abstract. There's a kind of movement back and forth between images that are recognizable and images that just seem like marks on the surface. And that's especially true of what I think is one of the master works uh, in the collection, this panel from 1960, in which these signs do not quite coalesce into something recognizable, but it suggests the possibility of a figure in the act or in the process of becoming something identifiable. And at this point, you know, Miro was very much thinking about advanced abstract painting uh, in America and in Europe. And although it, by 1960, he was a modern old master, he was constantly responding to the most contemporary developments in world art. I think this is a wonderful opportunity uh, to, for the viewer to see part of the installation in process. We have not installed this work. It is one of five canvases that Miro made in 1973. 
Three are in the collection of the Miro Foundation, and one is in the collection of the family. And it's a very, very important work uh, within Miro's career. In December of 1973, Miro uh, ordered five large canvases, and uh, in a combination of techniques, he also began to burn the canvases with torches. And it was a very controlled burning. And the idea was for Miro, in a sense, to assassinate painting, to turn painting into something aggressive, to turn painting into an object. And when he first showed these works in 1974, at his retrospective in Paris at the Grand Palais, he had them hanging from the ceiling so you could see them from both the front and the back. And Miro intended and took photographs uh, of the painting in which you would see he took photographs at, or had photographs taken of the paintings out of doors and you could see the entire environment and the landscape come through the painting. So painting, rather than just being something that hangs on a wall, now had a broader context within the real, a context in which the environment merges or interpenetrates the work of art. So we had this, because it's very fragile, as you can tell from where it is burned, we had this framed to protect it, and rather than hanging it from the ceiling, I'm going to show you what we're doing with it. And the solution that we uh, devised was to build a platform with a steel armature, and that armature will come right up through the holes in the box, and then the painting that I just showed you, the bird canvas, will be placed inside. And the beauty is that you'll be able to see it from both sides and the environment from outside, including the Louise Bourgeois uh, spider, Maman, uh, will, in a sense, enter into Miro's work. Directly opposite it, I've installed another painting that was done almost contemporary in December 1973 with the burned canvas. And in this case, it is a collage made of multiple layers of materials. And you can almost see the way Miro cuts into the materials just as he used a knife, and in the case of the burned canvases, a torch to uh, begin to erode and destroy the surface of the work. And over here, he's collaged a map uh, of uh, Denmark, of a section of Denmark, but the effect of the black, which structures everything, is almost as if you're looking through a puncture in the canvas. So there's a beautiful dialogue that I tried to establish between the burned canvas and this wonderful painting. And indeed, in Miro's day, uh, he was thinking about precisely the relationships between painting and something that goes beyond painting.